Hello everybody, this is Bazkar. Welcome back to a new season of Banished. Yes, it's here. Uh, I've had some people asking when I was going to be doing the new season, and it's here. And primarily this is because uh, the 105 version of Banished has been released uh, publicly on Steam. It's no longer in beta. Um, this also means that we have um, Colonial Charter 162. Um, previously I was playing on uh, 1.6, I believe, and then 1.6.1 uh, came out towards the end of the last season and the production release is 162. Um, I don't think there's a lot of changes between 61 and 62, but uh, we'll see what how things go here. Um, and um, I did want to point out that I'm going to use a few different mods in this one. Um, I am still using the CC No Smoke, um, which just removes smokes coming from the chimney, so that uh, helps out a little bit with the graphics situation, and uh, things will render faster. Um, I've got the Color Roads mod um, on, which is not on Steam, I believe, um, but it is on the Colonial Charter website. It's an official mod you can download. Um, this was created for Skystorm uh, specifically, I believe. Um, but it's it, basically they're all dirt roads, but they come in a multitude of colors. So we may use them, we may not. I've got them just in case. Um, and I downloaded a happiness radius mod, um, which I'm hoping will work with 162. I think it will. Um, but basically, there are buildings in Banished, um, which I've known, and I think most of you know, that actually produce happiness. Um, things like churches, I believe, will produce one. Um, um, that kind of deal. Um, and what this does is it just displays that radius to you. The radius has always been there. It's just never been visible. And this will actually display it. Uh, the unhappiness radius, same deal. It's just it's going to show it for buildings that produce uh, a negative effect on happiness. So um, this should hopefully allow us to um, maybe reduce um, some of the happiness issues I've seen in the past, and we'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, and um, the other one is just 162, the Forge Awakens, and the debug menu that I always have installed. So that's what we're going to be using. I have also set this to use DirectX um, 11. Um, I don't believe that was in the previous build, um, but I noticed that I had the option um, when I was looking around today. Um, so I've gone from DirectX 9 to DirectX 11. I believe I was using DirectX 9 the last time. So with any luck, that'll help with some of the graphics and rendering as well. And let's get to it, I think. Um, I do believe, so just a little backstory here, I've had a character that I've used previously with SimCity 4 and some other city building games um, uh, as kind of a storyteller of um, colonization and such, and his name is Hap, Captain Hap in particular, and um, I think that that's going to work good for Banished, um, I'm, so we're going to kind of... I don't know if I'll say story tell throughout the whole thing, but we're going to certainly go with a little bit of a basis of um, Hap. And I'm not sure what I want to call the town. Do I want to just call it Hap or, um, you know, something of that nature? I think I'm just going to go with Hap. Um, I think that sounds good. Um, and Hap is basically an explorer. He's gone off with a, a menagerie of uh, people and animals and such, and he's, um, you know, he's kind of like lost in the world and he's tired of the way things are going for him so he's looking for something new and so that's what he's going to do where he's going to found his own colony and banished and the map seed we are going to use is little number old 45 um, it's just a really good flat um, terrain with lakes and I am going to do uh, the lake water start I believe is the one I was using yes lake water I'm going to go with a very large map, and I want to go with, I think, a tropical setting. Um, now this is a question I've posed on Reddit, and I've searched Google, I've searched the Colonial Charter website, and I've never been able to find a document that actually shows what um, the climate option does. I mean, I know it affects snow and rain frequency. But I have very little information to go on here other than no snow. And, you know, it's tropical, so I'm assuming it's hotter than average. Um, but I would love to have a document that actually outlines all that. If you know of a document that does that, please let me know. Put it in the comments. I would love to see it, and I'll make sure and share it with others. So, um, But I think we are going to go with tropical, no snow. Um, I 
am going to have weather effects turned off uh, again. Um, people seem to agree that that was uh, much better to watch than having it on. Um, so we're not going to see a lot of snow anyways other than just be on the ground. Things would turn white. So we'll go with no snow. Um, and there was um, uh, one other thing I wanted to talk about here was, well, disasters will be off just like normal. Um, I'm going to go with the Antilles medium. Um, so basically we have only palm and tropical trees. And we're going to start with five families, no homes. There will be a barn, and there will be some clothing, food, firewood, tools, construction material, you know, that kind of stuff will still be there. And there will be a few seeds. Um, we don't obviously get to pick what those seeds are, but hopefully they're something that will grow well in a tropical area. Um, I am going to post um, links in the description of this video to some charts that I'm going to be using to help me along my way. I may or may not look at those charts um, while I'm recording. Um, we'll just see how big of a question I have about things. But I'm hoping that that will take care of some of these um, well, this isn't producing well. Why is it not producing well? It's probably a temperature issue, something of that nature. And um, I'll make sure and post the links for those. They're on the Colonial Charter website. Um, I was going to start with... Um, let's see if I can find it here. I don't remember which one it is, but one of them is a um, starting condition that gives you only bamboo trees. Now, I thought initially that would be really cool because we'd just have an abundance of bamboo available. But, in fact, that's not what it does. It just gives you trees that look like bamboo. When you cut them down, they're still logs. So, no bamboo. So, we're not going to do that. We're going to stick with this until he's medium. And with that, let's get started. Alright, guys, here we are. So, we're going to go ahead and we're set up our interface again. And just like normal here get our um, general details there, we'll get our event log down here, get our trusty map up for a little while, we probably won't have it on forever, but we're going to have it for a little while. Um, I'm going to use this vertical scrolling profession list this time, um, gives us a little more viewable area, and depending on how things go, I may even use uh, just this list right here um, at some point, just gives you laborers and builders. I tend to click on the individual buildings to do all this other stuff anyways, but we'll see. Actually, let's just go ahead and do it. I'm just going to put this up here. We'll see how it goes. Gives us a little more screen real estate, and if I need to, I can change it later. And I do believe that is all I want out of here. Now let's take a look around. I have uh, already looked at this map seed, but I'm going to give you just a quick little overview here. You can see we got a giant lake over here, and we're going to plan on doing some stuff out here. There could be some dock work type stuff, but one thing I really want to do is I saw another uh, person on Reddit doing, which I thought was a great idea, was utilizing the uh, flatten terrain tool to actually build land mass out and about. And I've seen other people do it too, but um, he took and flattened out a whole bunch of area and he used it to make a port and put traders and such on it. I thought that looked like it might be a really good idea. I don't know how functional it actually is because you got your traders out here in the middle of nowhere and most of the population back on land. So I'm not sure how functional that'll be, but we may try something along those lines. I'm not sure yet. Um, and we have access to a lake right here that's pretty good. And I'm thinking I'm going to flatten this out and um, turn this into kind of like a little island, uh, you know, base camp kind of thing. We'll see what we do. Maybe some uh, piers coming off of it and that kind of thing. I think that'd work out pretty good. And one thing I'm going to do in this one that I um, didn't do in the last series was is I'm going to try to focus a little less on food production on my own, try to trade for a lot of different things that I need. Um, I think that might be a good... Uh, adventure to do. Um, one thing that I will probably do though is still produce some food and try to get tenneries up and going to kind of be not only a source of food but also a source of a trade item um, and maybe do something along those lines. But early on we're going to try to do I think some uh, the standard food options that we have here remember where things are. Now, um, I'm not going to do this one quite as tutorially as I did in the last uh, season. Um, hopefully those watching kind of know what's going on already. Um, if you don't, I actually wanted to grab a gather. Um, if you don't, just let me know in the comments and I can uh, certainly answer questions. 
And there'll be a few things that I get kind of tutorially on, but... Uh, and obviously that's not a word, but... Tutorial-ly. <laughs> um, but I'm going to do something else that I don't always do. One of the things is... You know, a lot of people will actually swear by putting um, your gatherer, your... Um, hunter, your logger, and everything in a group and with a couple of houses, and then just kind of let them work and do their thing, which is great. It does function. It's just not something I usually do, um, at least not early on, but I'm going to do that this time, and I am going to use tiny shacks to start with. I want to make sure we have um, houses up quickly with as few material uses as we can, and I'm going to put just two homes up here right now. We're going to get a forester up and going, and probably an herbalist fairly quickly. Now this is one thing I do want to mention. Because I went with these tropical trees, I want to make sure that I build a forester uh, lodge that's growing palm trees. I don't want to grow normal trees. and I haven't tested it, but my assumption is, is that a regular forester would grow normal trees if I put them in there. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to put this somewhere like in here. That looks like a pretty good use of space. And I'm going to pause this and let's get our... get some builders up and going here. And I do want to reduce down the number of builders at each location. This will help us manage our buildings a little better. Usually early game, one builder is fine. I'm not trying to build stuff as fast as possible. There we go. That should diversify things out a little bit. And it'll be some quick food gathering. I'm going to go ahead and set us up to five times for now. We won't keep it on five times forever, but we're going to do it a little less. And I'm going to try in the season and actually do a lot more zooming in. Um, that's something that people um, were talking about that I spent too much time in the sky and they'd like to see it a little closer down to the ground. So anyways, we're going to um, give this a second and let this build. Alright, while they're getting that built, I think what I also need to do is we're already getting a little bit low on some of our material here, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to collect some trees and some uh, logs or some rocks and such. So I'm going to just tell them to grab this there. I'm going to grab just a few rocks. And we don't really need the iron ore just yet, so I'm going to hold off on that. Gather her up and go in here. We're just going to put one in there. And I think that they'll be close enough to this barn that I don't need to worry about building a barn right away. I may yet do it on um, in the future, but I'm not going to do it right now. Now, one thing I think will happen is is the uh, logger will come out here and he'll gather some of this rock and ore as well as he tries to plant trees, so that should be helpful. Alright, climbing up here on this stuff. And we don't have any herbs, and um, that's something I do want to make sure and build, and something I'm going to point out, because I was kind of surprised, um, and I never really mentioned it in any of my previous videos that I can think of, but something that people seem surprised about on reddit one day was not knowing exactly how the herbalist worked and it, to be fair it doesn't say anything in the description really about it it just says that it's going to affect the health and the healing of your citizens which i think is true i mean it's going to um you know i think heal some illnesses if they get sick still i don't think you have to have a hospital to cure an illness but what it does with an herb itself is it works as a food group so if um, so if I'm not producing any grains, I'm going to set the hunting cabin up already. Um, so if I'm not producing any grains uh, anywhere and they need grains in their diet, they can go to the herbalist and eat an herb and it'll count as a grain in their diet. So that's kind of the way herbalist works as I understand it. If somebody has a counter argument to that, please let me know. But that's the way I understand it and it seems to be the consensus with other people that I've talked to. So um, I wanted to just kind of put that out there. Um, and we are actually going to build one of those, but I'm not going to build it just yet. I'm not too terribly concerned about their health at the moment. Um, but I do need to get a couple houses up. 
and I think the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to go ahead and early, kind of early start here with some docks. And I kind of think like a fishing dock out here would be really good. Um, let's go ahead and drop this down to two times for a little bit. Um, let's see. I think that a fishing dock would do good out here. I'm going to have to zoom out so we can see that radius a lot better. kind of thinking like right in this area. I think that would look pretty good, so I need to come to right about... Right here about this point, doesn't have to be exact. That looks about right, I think. I'm going to go in a little bit further than I should probably have to, but I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to start with just uh, three little piers here, and I'm going to put in a dock shanty. So make sure I get this right here. Yes, that is the. Yes, that is the door. There's actually a little white line on there that tells you how to line it up, but it's kind of hard to see on the houses. And I'm going to build a small um, dock storage. And then what we'll do is we'll end up coming out here. I see this is one of the things you need to watch out for. She's kind of stuck. She'll figure herself out because this is open now. But um, if they come out here and build this one or another one out here before the others are done, they'll get stuck on it and they'll eventually starve to death and die. So I tend not to build too many at one time just to prevent that. I think two more and actually two more may be too many. Let's see. Yeah, I kind of think two is going to be too many. I've got it paused. Oh, I didn't actually pause it, but that's okay. I'm going to remove one. We'll get one up and going, and then we'll see if that's far enough out for that uh, dock to go in. I'm going to get a forester in here. We'll let him cut and plant for the moment. Actually, I'm going to take that back. He's not going to cut. I want him to just plant. That should um, fill this area in a lot more. Hopefully get some of the stuff collected around here. But um, we got plenty of stuff we can clear cut with laborers, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. And switch that down to one, switch that down to one. We'll get that up and going, and then we're going to put our fishing dock out there. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's going to have to come out one more. Two. Two might be better. Mm, let's go with a full three. And we'll get, go ahead and get that out there. I think that'll work out just fine. And let's see, we got that house up and going. So we still have some people that are homeless. We need at least two more houses, I believe. Um, where do I want to build these? We kind of need firewood, I think. That's something else I would love to have some clarification on is... Um, and so if somebody knows, please let me know, because I really have no idea. Uh, it's not something I've tested. Um... I'm going to go ahead and put a tiny shack right here, and we'll have a logger. But what it is I'd like to know is, if the temperature never drips below, like, a certain temperature, do they still need firewood? You know, do they still need to be producing some sort of heat in their house? Or is the game mechanic just saying, it's winter time, we need wood? I don't know. I've never really tested it, so I'm kind of curious about that. But eventually we're going to not be chopping wood anyways. Um, for fuel, we're going to be using reeds or bamboo, hopefully, at some later point in time. Um, and what we can do with that is we can use that um, to... What's the word I'm looking here for? Um, fuel our houses, but we can also use it for you know tons of other things. So, uh, like furnace fuel. Turn it into furnace fuel. Um, and I kind of hope that maybe that'll give us an idea of uh, how much uh, wood we actually need. Because, like, right now it's 87 degrees and it's late summer. I'm honestly not expecting this to drop down very low at all. I did kind of want to look at this. Let's see, here's our radius here. Um, that one's a smaller radius. That one's a smaller radius. So, um, 
roughly we can cut trees out anywhere down along here. If we cut them up too far, then you know they're gonna run out of areas here. wood. Oh, and that is something else we need. Um, this is kind of a change in organizational structure that I noticed. Uh, stockpiles, they start with the transparent ones now, and then the regular one it's out here. Um, I believe this button used to be like down here or something. I could be totally wrong, but it seems like it's out of place to me at the moment, and I was accidentally putting them in. Um, I don't care much for the transparent ones, mostly because they're hard to find later when you need them unless they just happen to have stuff in them. So I'm going to use a regular stockpile and this is what I like to call the conveyor belt system. This is a tip I learned I think from Skystorm. I mentioned it in my last video as well. But if you put in a wood stockpile or any stockpile, but a wood stockpile for this purpose here, then the forester can bring wood over to this end up here but I have a logger down here. He can come to any point on here, including down here at the very bottom, and pick up the wood that's actually sitting here. So he can just come down here and grab his wood without having to worry about walking all the way up here. So it works kind of like a conveyor belt. So good tip if you didn't know about that tip. I don't know if that's a, actually a bug or if it's you know just an oversight, but I'm going to utilize it because it's there. We're producing food pretty good. Um, Doc is almost up and going. Need some more wood again already. I'm gonna go ahead and take out this chunk right here. And one of the other things I want to do is um, put in a dock workshop. Um, now, a dock workshop we can make some clothes, but they require feathers and reeds. Um, we can make um, Fuel for Homes, um, which I believe is Fire Bundles from Reeds, if I remember correctly, um, and Rough Tools and Rope. Um, the Rough Tools is something I think I'm going to try, at least for a while, I'm going to use Rough Tools instead of building fancier tools uh, in order to see if we can just sustain ourselves that way. I've, I've heard people, both sides of the fence, say how it's really good to have um, just rough tools. They just don't last as long, but you can produce them faster and cheaper. So that's kind of the idea I'm going to go with and see how that works. And I'm going to put him right here. And I believe that we're going to need to put in a piece of dock, but I don't know if it's going to need to be a two-piece here. Let's try just a one-piece and see if that'll take care of it. And they may not even need that. They may be able to walk right onto it, no problem at all. But that allows to do tools, and that's something I sometimes struggle with, is having enough tools to get the jobs done. So we're out of firewood. Nobody is complaining as of yet about firewood, but I would expect that to change pretty quickly. And I'm going to put in, I think, another home. Do I want to put in a shanty home? I don't know how good that would look on the actual land. Looks a bit off to me. We're going to try it. I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to put in a dock piece right there. We got this guy going up here. We're gonna go ahead and put in a put in our logger here, and I'm actually gonna reduce this down to a hundred. Just we'll see how things go. And put this back up to five times. Coming up probably on the end of the episode here. He hasn't actually planted any. Well, he's probably planted. We can't tell what he's planted. That's one thing I'd like to see here is, like, planted X trees. I think that'd be good information to have. And we got several child here. They've been busy people. What's our hunter doing here? Duck meat and ten feathers. That's cool. 
we'll build roads at some point. And something I want to do in this town a little more than the last one is, um, so, so in my previous series I mentioned that I like to build pretty towns, not solely functional towns. Um, we ended up mostly with a solely functional town in the last one. That was because I didn't realize how difficult it was to concentrate on the gameplay aspect while I was talking. It was really the first YouTube series I had done. Um, so that's something I'm going to try to work on a little bit this time around. Try to um, beautify a little bit more than we did in the last one. And hopefully I don't have to worry about any major releases of content between here and the end of this one so we don't have to like stop in the middle. I think we're good on builders for a moment, so I'm going to go ahead and reduce it down so I have some laborers to fix stuff up here. So, see, so we can make fire bundles out of reeds, survival codes, we can make rope out of reeds, um, which would allow us to upgrade these shanties. But for now, we're going to do rough tools, logs, and iron ore. And I'm actually going to set this down to, like, I think just 25 tools at the moment. I don't want them using up every single little bit of resources that we have. Okay, see, they are complaining about firewood now. So, even though it's 64 degrees outside, I think that just because it's winter, they are going to say that I need wood. And that's kind of what I thought happened, but I wasn't sure. Now, whether or not they would die of at all, or if they'd just sit here and complain without end, I don't know. Um, but I have a feeling that if they're complaining here, that their happiness may be going down too. So, we'll probably just take care of that. And, let's see. So, I think that's a pretty good start for this first episode. Um, lots of talking in there, not as much construction as maybe we would like. But we did get up um, plenty of homes for our people. Um, we will quickly need to add in a, a couple more homes. Eventually, um, we will knock down um, these... Uh, shacks probably. Um, I could upgrade them I guess um, but I'm not sure that I want to bother with that. Um, it would allow us to have one more person in them and keep a small real estate for a small cost so we, we might. I've never actually upgraded a tiny house. Um, but I kinda think we'll probably just put in some bigger homes and then tear down these tiny ones. Um, Let's see here. What else have we done? So we got in, we're getting some food. We're mm, we could be better on food production, but we're not doing too bad. Um he's gotten 400 already. And he's doing okay. He could be doing better. And our fish, how are we doing on fish? 260 is pretty good for a late season start, so we'll see how that goes. And we have reeds, but I'm not exactly sure where the reeds came from. Probably when we were clear cutting would be my guess. So I do believe that's going to do it for this episode. Um, you know, guys, let me know if you got any ideas for the way you want this town to shape up. I'm certainly open to ideas for whatever you want to do. And, um, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Catch you back next time. Thanks.